Hello everybody. I wanted to talk a bit about the historiography project that is your final project for this course. Um, I want to fill in some of the gaps, talk about the kind of the big picture of what this project is and why you're doing it. Uh, I, I'm not going to focus on the details, the rubric, the that kind of thing. I'm, I'm, that stuff you all have access to that in the final project document. Instead I want to talk about the project in general, kind of put it into context for what the whole point of this is. Um, one of the issues that we often have with students uh, coming into the, especially a graduate history program, is that students come into it with the assumption that a graduate history program is going to be an extension of their undergraduate history degree, where you're going to read more, you're going to learn more about the Civil War, the Revolutionary War. You're going to learn more factual information. You're going to read. You're going to read more narratives. You're just going to become more factually complete. I suppose you could say. That's not what happens in a graduate history program, though, as many of you are finding out. Professional historians, we don't just sit around and talk about facts all day. Uh, you know, we don't have. Con we don't get together at conventions and just talk about. You know, the Battle of Gettysburg, and I mean, sometimes we'll talk about specific troop movements or something, but that's not the general gist of our conversations. Usually professional historians talk about other professional historians. We talk about the work that other historians are doing. So if it comes to the Civil War, we'll talk about historian X is doing this type of work on the Civil War and is doing this, learning this stuff, using these sources, and it's going to create a really cool project based on that research. And his, this other historian is working on, uh, you know, women in 15th century Europe and what they contributed to the family structure, what they contributed to the economy, and they're doing using these types of sources, and they're doing this new stuff that hasn't been done before, and that's really cool. We're looking forward to that, that project also. That's what professional historians do, is that we, we, we track methodologies, we track what other historians are doing, we, track, we talk about source bases, we talk about kind of the meta stuff that you don't learn about in the undergrad program, and that's fine, but we're doing that here in a grad uh, history program. And so when you're talking about a historiography project like the one that we're doing in this course, this is an essential step in any research project that you're going to do until the end of time. As a professional historian, the first step to any research project is to find out what other historians have already said about this topic. Because you don't want to just dive into a historical topic, spend a couple of months, weeks, years doing research, and then months, weeks, and years writing the an, an article or a book manuscript, only to find out at the end of the time at the end of all of that, some other historian's already done it. And the other historian has already reached the same conclusions you reached. Because if you're reaching the same conclusions as some other previous historian, then there was really no point in doing that research. It's already been done. Um, you're reinventing the wheel, so to speak, and nobody's going to want to publish that. Nobody cares because it's already been done. Now, you might present it in a new way, which, okay, that might, that might have some value, but generally, if you reach the con same conclusions as somebody else, there's not much point. So, what you need to do at the start of any research project is find everything that's already been written on that topic and read everything that's already been written on that topic so that you can figure out what has yet to be said about that topic. Um, and so one of the components of the final project in this course is identifying a gap in the existing literature. What have previous historians missed? After you've read everything about this topic, what is yet to be discovered? What is yet to be talked about? Have historians missed out on something? Have they ignored some source base that you are aware of? Have they looked at it from a political perspective but not a social perspective? Um, there's, hopefully there's some new way that you can approach the topic that hasn't been done before. And that is a gap in the existing literature. And that, if you choose to pursue this topic, that is the angle that maybe you could pursue if you wanted to do a research project on this topic. And then that would give you a new direction to take. Um, because that's, that's a big part of it, is that a historiography is a way where you learn what has been said before, but it's also a way for you to figure out what hasn't been said yet. 
Um, because you can't, like I said, you can't jump into a topic and just expect to, you know, just engage with the material, engage with primary sources, and the result is fine no matter what. You have to demonstrate that it hasn't been done before. And that's difficult. I understand that, that, that we all have to do that. We all understand that that's difficult. We would love to be able to jump into any historical topic, just write up what we find, send it out into the world, and, and be done with it. The problem, though, is that we have to explain why our work is worthwhile. Why should somebody care about our work? It's gonna, we're going to devote a lot of energy and time into doing this project. A reader is going to dedicate a lot of energy and time into reading your pro final product. How can we justify that use of time and energy if it's not being used to create something new? Uh, and so when you get to like your capstone and your thesis, and if you move on, if you, need, if you move on to a PhD program, you'll get to a doctoral dissertation. Everybody's going to be talking about, okay, what are you saying that is new? How are you adding to the existing, to our existing knowledge? If you've got an existing literature about a topic, what are you saying that that existing literature has not already said? Because you have to contribute something new or there's not much point in doing it. Um, <clears throat> so that's what this project is. This is to get you into that mindset. It is to get you into the idea that you need to know what books have been written on a topic. And that means all of the books that have been written on the topic. The project itself is only asking for, you know, to, anal to analyze eight to ten sources. And that's because it's only a ten week time frame. It's a 12 to 15 page paper. It's a fairly small project in the overall scheme of things. And so you don't you only need to focus on like eight to ten. But when you're getting to a capstone project or a thesis project or a dissertation, you need to be familiar with everything that has been written on that topic since, since the beginning of time uh, in order to be educated on it, in order to be able to talk about this and say that, well, you know, this is what I am adding to the discussion. All these other historians have added all this other stuff. I am adding this, though. This is why it's important, this new edition. This is why people should care what I have to say. This is worth all of the energy that I put into it. This is worth all of the energy that the reader is going to put into it. This is what matters. I am adding something new to the conversation. And I can prove that by looking at the existing literature over here and saying, they all did all this. They, I'm standing on their shoulders. I am using a lot of their work and their ideas and all that, but I'm going beyond to add this something new, whatever this something is. And that something new is going to be your work. It is you. It's, it's, it, this is what you are adding to the conversation. So that's what this project is. Uh, you're, gonna, you're spending you know, 12 to 15 pages, whatever it is, uh, analyzing the existing body of work on a topic, you're identifying the arguments, the strengths and weaknesses, you know, bias, use of sources, all of that fun stuff, all of that analysis of the existing literature. But then at the end, you also need to identify what is left to be said about this topic. What have other historians missed? What aren't they talking about? How can I or some other historian add to what has already been said? Because if there's nothing else for you to add to it, then this isn't a very fruitful topic of research and you might as well move on to something else. Odds are there's probably something new to be said about it. That's what's really amazing about history is that we're constantly reinventing interpretations. We are constantly finding new things to say, taking conversations in new directions, focusing on new sources. There's lots of ways that you can take a project. So very rarely will you be in a situation where there's literally nothing left to say. I mean, it can be difficult, you know, if you're, if you're interested in the American Civil War, well, so are 10,000 other historians who have written tens of thousands of books on the Civil War, and so it's going to, you know, it might be more difficult for you to find something new to say about the Civil War, but there are a lot of topics out there that it will be easy to say something about, you know, the effect of Civil War in Podunk, Idaho. I don't know. That maybe no one's ever touched that before. That might be a very fruitful topic of discussion, though, because uh, that's kind of the opposite angle. Is that you may come, you may stumble on a historical topic that literally no historian has ever touched before, and that's that that makes it easy for you because really no matter what you say, it's something new. So that's that's good. Uh, you but you still need to go through the grunt work of finding out have any other historians talked about this topic before. And if they have, what have they said about it? How have they analyzed this topic? And have they missed something? Is there something new that I can add to it? 
You have to do that for every project going forward. In the past, when you were an undergrad student, uh, it was enough for you to say, well, the instructor assigned it to me, and so I had to write a paper. This was interesting. I found these sources, and I'm done with it. That works for undergraduate classwork, but now that you're training to become a professional historian, where you're going to be publishing articles and books and doing peer reviews, um, that doesn't cut it anymore. You need to come up with a significance to your work that you did not have to come up with before. You need to come up with a, why is this important? Why does anybody care? I, sh I often share the story in my courses about a instructor that I had in my graduate school who used to say, so what, whenever I would talk about my projects, uh, which was frustrating. <laughs> and it was very upsetting at the time, but it makes perfect sense. Because the question is, why do I care? You need to tell me why I should care about your work. And if you can say, well, no one's done it this way before. And I think this is going to be a fruitful pursuit for me to go this, this new direction with it. That's important. And that's going to sell your work to an audience. Um, because that's the other component that you did not have to do as an undergrad. You didn't have to worry about selling your work to an audience. You had a, an audience of one, your instructor. Your instructor graded it, and you were done. As a professional historian, though, there's a much broader audience out there. Who do you want to read your work? Because it's kind of pointless for you to spend all these hours and months and days and years creating a, 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 a topic and, a, and, a, and a, a book manuscript or something. There's not much point to doing that if no one's going to read it. So you want someone to read it. So you need to convince people to read your work. Uh, because people, you know, outside of, uh, in, in the profession, people aren't forced to read your work like your undergraduate history instructor was forced to read your work. Nobody's forced to read your work. Uh, so you need to convince people to do that. And being able to say, I'm looking at this topic in a new way. Uh, or I'm looking at a new topic that hasn't been covered at all. And it is important because X, Y, Z. That's what's going to get you people interested in your work. So that's what this project is. This is to get you started on that process. So from now on, every time you approach a topic of historical research, you're going to need to do a historiographical analysis. You may not have to write a paper about it, but you need to do this work for yourself. You need to take notes. You need to identify who has done what, what is important, what's not important, what sources have been used, what sources have not been used, what you know, historical lenses have we used and which lenses have not been used. You need to identify all of that stuff so that you can then go and add something new to the conversation. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have any questions, concerns, obviously send me an email or uh, ask a question on the general questions discussion board and I will help you in any way that I can. I want you to succeed at this. You're going to do this in every course for the rest of your MA program. You, this is not a skill that you're going to learn in this class and then just walk away never doing it again. Historiography is going to be the center of your life um, until you finish the program and then if you go on to become a professional historian, historiography is going to be at the center of your life till you die. That's just, that's just the way the profession works. So I want you to be good at it. I want you to understand it. So please get in touch with me if you have any questions or concerns. Okay, I will let you go. It's good, good talking to you. And hopefully, um, here's to a good end of the term. Have a good day.